Welcome back, everyone, to episode four of our Let's Play series of the new game, Clockwork Empires. Uh, if you've been joining us through the first three videos, you'll know that we've spent some time. We've expanded our uh, labor housing as well as our overseer housing. We've been spending some time on that as well. So we've got things up and moving along. We've got a few specializations in play right now with some carpentry, uh, a kitchen. We've got a barracks over here, which has absolutely nothing in it right now, um, but plenty of room for upgrades later on as we move them, hopefully through uh, some more advanced weaponry. So a lot of things going on. Uh, you might notice these, these boxes right here. Those are the way you make most of your upgrades, and you can see here the beds are made that way. So we've got some overseer housing being worked on. But I thought today in this video we would slow things down a little bit. As has been appropriately uh, pointed out in the comments section, uh, and thank you very much for those. I really appreciate those. I appreciate the likes that you guys give on the videos as well as the comments that you give. Uh, particularly those that uh, alert me to things that I've totally missed in the game because that happens a lot. So what I wanted to do today is step back a little bit because there's something that was brought to my attention that I've not been doing a good job of. I've been in such a hurry to try to grow the population. Let's slow things down a little bit here. I've been in such a hurry to grow the population that I've not paid attention to the happiness of the citizens. We've got them plenty to eat, although it looks like right now we need some work there. So we'll take care of that. They've got plenty of raw food to eat, but we need uh, the kitchen to really take care of things and, and up their game. So we'll take care of that. But if I click on a building here, you can see building quality is negative two. And the way that works in a very general fashion is the more beds we put in a house, the more it reduces the building quality. So basically think of that as like overpopulation or you're putting too many people in a small space so they want some quality in there. Well, for quality, we need decorations. Things like windows um, are good here because the better we do for the amenities, the more our population can grow per building or per capita. So we're going to spend some time on that today. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need a few more things from our carpenter here. Now, as we've played along, I have learned some things. And one of the things I've learned is that this carpentry workbench I really only need one of them for the most part. We'll get into some things like mining um, and so on, and paper stacks, which will be for the uh, the explorer or naturalist uh, that we'll get into. But I generally only need one of these for the most part. So this one has stayed more or less empty uh, and devoid of any jobs. What I do need more of generally are the workbenches. So we're going to try to work on that a little bit today, but there's two more buildings that I really, or two more uh, workbenches that I need to have in the carpentry workshop. And so we're going to go to our carpentry workshop and we're going to look for the decor workbench. And it takes uh, two of pieces of lumber, so that's perfectly fine. And one of the things that, that I'm not quite sure about in this game is when you place things, the colors sort of get messed up here. So I'm going to try, okay, we're going to put that one right there. And then I'm going to put a second one here, and I'm going to spread things out a little bit. Uh, my ongoing worry and fear here is that I am going to run out of uh, space for my carpenter. But I'm beginning to think that that's okay because there's only so much one guy and, and one group can work on. So another thing I want to do is get another assembly workbench in here as well. And I think I can put these... Let's put that one right there. Okay, so we need these guys to work on some things for us. Oops, wrong one. And so right here, I'm going to have him make an assembly workbench there. And then here, I'm going to have two decor workbenches. So that will take care of what we need here. So we'll let them go ahead and work on that. But as always, I need to come up to our commodity screen. And we're running a little bit low on logs. So we've got plenty of stone right now, although our, our need for stone is going to be greatly increased uh, shortly as we work on some uh, ammunition made out of stone. But let's, for right now, let's go ahead and see what we can get for some trees to get chopped down. I'd like to find a good clump of trees that we could work on. And here we go. There's multiple trees there. Oh, very nice selection of trees there. 
one there, and let's see, a couple more there and there. Okay, so we want to keep these guys busy chopping trees because we're going to need plenty of wood going forward as we work on these decorations and, of course, for now, our workbenches. Okay, so now we've got, let's see what we've got going in the kitchen because, remember, if you look up here, provisions, we have plenty of food to basically let allow them to eat poorly, which is allow them to eat raw food. So they're basically going to eat the corn right out of the garden. But we don't have that much to feed them very well. So you can see they're working on on that right here, but we want to try to increase that a little bit. So right now they're trying to maintain 20. We're going to up that and make this a huge number. So basically they're all the time working on this. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that up to 30. And then what else can we work on? Well, we we can work on cooked meat, but unfortunately right now we're not, we don't have anybody hunting, so that's not going to do us a whole lot of good because we're going to have a very limited supply of meat. So we're going to go ahead and run this number way up for fungus stew. Again, that just sounds so appetizing. And we're going to have them working on that full time. Now, Trinket is our overseer here, and let's see how many people. She's got two right now. Now, we don't have any outstanding workers that we can assign, so we have three areas here and a total of three workers. So that should work out good. Okay, in the meantime, you may have noticed that they've put down our workbenches. So now we can come back into carpentry and see that we're working on that. And let's see what else we need to get going on. Now, for these, I'm going to have these set up to always maintain three cots. And then for this one, oops, not what I wanted just yet. And... For this one, I'm going to have him maintain some bedding because as we continue to grow, I want to make sure we always have enough beds and that we're never in short supply. So, okay, let's take a look at our decor and let's slow things down a little bit here while we're talking. Okay, so our decor workbenches. We're going to need to do some things. These are for our, we need to upgrade our beds as far as uh, the happiness and uh, quality, and also the workplaces. So we want to look at how to do that. Well, the very basic idea of this is that we're going to need to take three planks and make it into one brick a brack. So we're, we're going, to want, going to want one always working on that. So we're going to change this and always maintain about five of these. And then for our housing, we've got some options. And let's, let's take a look at that before we go any further. What modules can we use in our housing for our laborers to increase uh, the quality? Well, as you can see from our cot, the building quality goes down one every time we add a cot to a building. So really cramming people in there is not a good way of doing it. So if we come across open windows, don't increase the quality. Uh, if we had a painting, that would be a huge increase in quality. A simple cabinet would give us a plus one. A wall shrine plus one, clothesline, a small clothesline is plus one, and then a large clothesline is a plus two. So we're going to go ahead and focus on small clotheslines. And we're going to put these all around the building here. And we're going to see how well this works out, basically. And there's one there one there and I'm going to try to load these things up. We're just going to see how much they help out. And this is going to be our test bed here. And so we're going to have a whole bunch of these. Let's see. Have we spun around the wrong way? No, it looks like okay, so we may have just reached uh, simply the the maximum we can put in this particular building. Okay, we'll put another one there. Okay, so it looks like we got a trader coming in from our messages over here to the side. All right, so it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine small clotheslines that are gonna be going in. Now, for the small clotheslines, we need the, if we come back over, the bric-a-brac, love that name, by the way, probably pronouncing it completely wrong, but you notice that we're, we need three planks for every one of these. So it's a huge wood supply that we're gonna need to fund this, but it is absolutely necessary to keep our our people happy. All right, so our traders have arrived over here. Let's take a quick look. Uh, so they've got some stone in it. Nothing we really need, so we're not going to worry about them. 
Okay, so in here looks like uh, tailing stint. Let's see how many workers he has working with him. He only has two, which is okay, I suppose. Uh, given, let's see, farmers, I really don't want to take anything away from farming, that's for sure. Okay, so let's take a look at our population while things are being worked on here. You can see these guys creating all the various things down here. And if we come up here, let's see, carpentry workbench is not working, not doing anything right now. Oh, looks like uh, we need to set up some, let's see, what do we want? Small clotheslines. And we want to maintain, let's say, a minimum of three of these for right now. Okay? And that's what we'll need for our laborer housing. If we take a quick look over at our practical housing for our uh, the practical beds and the housing for our overseers, you can see we're also down on building quality two uh, of negative two here. So let's take a look in our modules and see what the overseers would prefer. And you know it's not clotheslines because these are the middle class and they don't want anything to do with clotheslines. So we can put chairs in there. Ch chairs and tables don't really help us. Fancy windows don't help us, which is a good thing because glass is not something that I'm not I'm really sure about right now. Rare paintings are great, but it looks like practical cabinets are going to be what we need for now. Or this wooden looks like a wooden column, small uh, decorative column, and then we got some rugs that we could also use in here. But those take, as you can see, a huge amount of wood because it takes four bric-a-brac to do that and the cabinet would only need one and they give us the difference in building quality is just not enough to necessitate that so it looks like practical cabinets are what we're going to need for that and let's see how we're doing here okay so now these guys are bringing these in we've got two clothes lines in already and we've got some more guys bringing wood in so things are going well there uh, while we're at it, let's go ahead and add some more stockpiles. Let's see, where do we want to add these? I want to add these one right here, 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 and can I add one there? Yes, I can. Okay, that'll give us some more storage. Now, this isn't definitely isn't the most well laid out storage plan and, and, and that kind of thing, but it's serving the purpose right now. There's, let's see, what's this guy working on? He's got some more small clotheslines. We've got some cots, practical beds. So we've got some things going on. And so we've got two clotheslines that are working right now. Let's take a look and see. All right, so we've got some guys working on that, or at least they're trying to. I'm not sure if they're actually accomplishing anything right now with that. But, all right, one thing I've noticed is these cots never get put in. And so I thought I would try something out. Oops, wrong one. So let's go for a module and let's try to put a door over here. Maybe the door is simply too far away from them. Anything like that? Let's see. And doesn't really. Okay, so it looks like we don't have enough room for a door there. And the reason is We've got some clotheslines here. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. We'll get rid of that, and then we will add, if we can, and it looks like it's not gonna let us. Not sure why we can't add one there. That's interesting. Because I would have thought that we could add one there. But anyway, I would love to add one here because, all right, so we've com completed the tutorial even without paying any attention to it. But yeah, these cots, that's one thing that, that does sort of uh, worry me a little bit. Let's try to remove that. And now can we put a door up here? Because I would really like to have a door over there. And I'm going to work hard 
to see if it will allow me to put a door just anywhere in this area, but it does not want me to have one, and I'm not sure why. Okay, so now we can see our clotheslines are going up. So we've gotten several of these. Let's take a look at our building quality. Wow, we're at plus five now. So that's huge. So our test area, we, again, this is a lot more than we're probably going to ever need. But uh, this was our test, and we've got a lot of these up in here, and I think it's gone great. So let's go ahead. I want to see. There's got to be a way I can put a... As you can tell, I'm just not going to give up on this, this idea of, of putting a door there because it doesn't make sense to me that I can't put a door here. Was I choosing the wrong door? There we go. There we go. Okay, so I was just simply choosing the wrong module. So apparently a door is just not a door. You have to choose the right housing uh, because what I was doing was I was choosing a carpentry door instead of the labor bunkhouse door. So glad that's taken care of. Now, hopefully this will get some more cots in here. Now, this is going to decrease our our quality. Oh, and we've had a, a crash over here, so an airship has crashed. Now, this is actually very bad news for us. Besides the fact of the fact that an airship has crashed and who knows how many people perished in that, the other piece to that puzzle is that uh, we're going to get blamed for that. Uh, we don't have a foreign office right now. We don't have any way to conduct an investigation or anything like that. You, as you can see here, an investigation. So I'm going to have it. I'm going to try to do it, uh, have one of our army officers do it here, and we'll see how this works out. But in general, uh, we normally get uh, blamed for these. All right, so looks like our investigator has been sent over to take care of it. And we'll see what he comes back with. Okay, in the meantime, we are going to work on some more small clotheslines. And let's see here. We're going to put some, again, we're going to put several of these up here. Because even though it's... We, all of these, I'm sure, are not needed. I want to try to create a situation and see what happens if our colonists are really happy with the quality of their housing. So we're going to go ahead and work on that. Somebody's had an ominous dream, and I'm sure that's going to come back to bite me later on. But that's part of the fun of the game. We'll see what happens with it. Okay, so in here, it looks like we've run, we're running low on planks. And we're just going to have this guy work constantly on planks. Because in general, we just need as many of them as he can get for us. And so we've got plenty of logs. Looks like he's just stopping once he gets to 10. So we're going to we're gonna re remedy that problem. Okay, looks like we've got crop damage over here. we got some bugs coming in to eat our crops, which is never good. All right, so we've got some box cots. Oh, and sure enough, while I wasn't paying attention, maybe our door worked. Maybe the cots can only be placed a certain distance from a door at most. I don't know. That might explain why these in the middle haven't been placed yet, because obviously we have cots here. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. And I noticed we've got some construction that's not getting done. Uh, maybe... Maybe that was for the closed lines, and I'm putting them up faster than they can actually take care of them. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right, our building quality here has reached zero, which is good. Uh, at least it's not negative again. Maybe that'll uh, help folks be a little bit happier. And as soon as we get done with that, we'll move on and work on uh, the overseer housing, some happiness for them, and then also the workplace happiness as well. So for now, let's take a look and see what our population is. We have 17 laborers and nine overseers. How many overseers do not have any tasks? It looks like three according to the bottom of our screen here. So let's see if that's true. So we've got one, two, and three. Okay, so we're good. So it matches up nicely with that number. Looks like there's a lot of construction to do as well as some foraging. 
and we'll take a quick look and see our logs 32 that's good all right this guy here it looks like he's really been working hard on these decorations all right because we've got plenty of them to put out uh building quality here is back to zero here is still negative two because they haven't put up any of these yet and negative two here as well because they haven't put up any so it looks like uh probably a better idea is rather than to try to put a lot of cots in a in a small area rather than doing that try to put uh, a few cots maybe two or three and then some decorations in there and maybe that will will help out with the housing happiness because it'll raise the building quality uh, but again we'll see long term how that works itself out all right here i want to have another stone oven actually because I feel like our needs are going to be increased going forward. So I want another stone oven here. Let's go ahead and get one of those going. And with that stone oven, I'm actually going to, I believe, choose cooked meat. All right, looks like these guys are busy putting up all of these clotheslines as fast as we can make them. And we're doing that as fast as we can have somebody chop the wood we need. Okay, we're down to 28 logs, plenty of stone, uh, but I don't want to run out. Let's see, what do we got here? We got some debris here, okay. And I'm actually going to have some foraging done to get some more fungus for these guys. Because I know they love that. So we're going to try to get them... Some more of that so we don't run out of food for them. And we're still waiting on some folks to take care of that. I thought I already did have, yeah, okay, so we've already got them set to forage all of that. Hopefully we can get some wood out of that. And I'm beginning to think as much as I was hopeful about this trade office, and if you remember from previous videos, the, the trade office, I thought, was going to enable us to get additional crops. Well, it turns out that's not how you get additional crops. Additional crops come from buildings, okay? And they come from the laboratory. In the laboratory, you have to have a scientist who has a choice of multiple things that he can study. And one of those is crops, and that's how you can unlock uh, various types of crops. Unfortunately, we don't have the manpower right now or the supplies to have a full-time scientist. All right, let's see what we get. Now, I noticed that, again, one of these things, we've got a stack of three practical beds that are never getting installed here, and I'm worried that that's some of this construction that's going on that's not being done. And because of that, I am actually going to see if I can't I'm going to get rid of these and we're going to try this again because I'm afraid that we've got some some bugginess happening here and that's hurting our ability to put these in. Let's see if I can. Uh, my floor has completely disappeared on me here. So I'm having to try to do this as best I can because these colors are kind of weird and making it very difficult for me to tell anything. Okay, that looks like it'll be fine. So hopefully these assignments will be taken care of now. All right. Well, time sure does fly when you're having fun. And it looks like we're reaching the end of yet another video. So there are some other things that I'd hope to be able to do in this particular video. Unfortunately, we are running low on time. So I'm not going to be able to quite make it there. Uh, it's distressing me that they're not putting down these beds. I mean, there's a door here that still hasn't been put in. That bothers me. Uh, and as a matter of fact, yeah, it doesn't look like that door has even been put in either. Let's go ahead and dismantle that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. Overseer home, door, and we'll put that back in. Hopefully that will trigger something by removing the old order and putting in the new one. All right, so lots of things going on, and we're able to really increase the happiness uh, from the building quality. In this particular home, it increases our uh, overall population growth, and 
So I'm pleased with the work we've gotten done in this video. We're making some more decorations. Uh, we've gotten some food going. Our oven is up and going. So let's go ahead and have it work on cooked meat and have it maintain a minimum of basically as many as it can cook. We want them to just be busy cooking all the time. So I really appreciate you joining me for episode four of our Let's Play series and stay tuned for more Clockwork Empires.